Hi, Marie Antonescu here with massageandmovement.org and I wanted to talk about scarring, healing scars, perineal scars in particular. Uh, very common after birth to have perineal tears. Um, some don't take stitches and some do. Here's a little diagram, our inner part of our pelvic floor. Um, to get you oriented, here's the pubic bone, here's the sacrum, here we're looking from the top to below, here's the bottom up, vaginal canal, anus, a lot of times scars happen back here. And when a scar happens, a tear in birth is, at least for me, it felt like, oh, <laughs> I believe I made that noise. It's, um... And that can be stingy afterwards, especially during urination. So per, um, peri bottles, where you put like a, an herbal infusion in them and you squirt yourself with a peri bottle while you're going pee can be really helpful. I like those for a few reasons. One, the liquid isn't cold. It's probably room temperature and cool is fine, but our pelvic floor doesn't tend to like cold. So I don't recommend padsicles you know they have frozen pads um, after birth women are considered to be in like a cold damp state and adding cold to it can cause um, cold invasion in Chinese medicine and more likely to cause prolapsy type symptoms so interestingly the guy who made up the rice theory, the rest ice compression elevation for a sports injury, a, a little while after doing that and making it like super popular, he did more research and was like, you know, that's not actually helping heal. So the ice can actually prolong healing. It can stop the healing for a while. And he's also like, and we need mobilization which a lot of studies have found with injury, we need to keep mobilizing, not just splint and stop moving. So, so anyway, I don't recommend cold on our perineum, anywhere on our, anywhere on our pelvic floor, especially during um, or right after birth. So, but peri bottles are great and sits baths, nice warming things um, after birth. Whenever I work with clients, I tend to keep we tend to work together with them fully dressed, plus a warm room, maybe even a warm table, just things to keep people warm. It's very important after birth. Okay, um, so again, peri bottle, herbal infusion. There are a lot of great herbal concoctions out there. Um, plantain is a great one. Yeah, I guess just find your local herbalist. It's a great way to get herbs. I also, I love castor oil. This is the brand that I use. And this would be applied <clears throat> after the tear heals, like there's no more bleeding. Um, whereas the peri bottle can be done during the healing. So castor oil is great for a lot of things. It helps bring lymph, which is kind of our garbage disposal system of the body. It can help reduce inflammation. It's really great for scars. Um, yeah, wonderful for scars. So, and then some massage because that's what I do. So if you were to sit, first off, let's talk about why would you want to massage your scar? Scar tissue, scar tissue forms in a way at first where it's just like fibroblasts everywhere. It's just like, ah, oh, fix this. And it's kind of the body's way of going, we're never going to be injured here again. And it can just be kind of all messy. And then the body goes back in there and cleans it up and straightens it out. But if we don't have a lot of blood flow, the body might not go back and be, might, might not be able to go back and clean it out. Um, and we just want our scars to be mobile scars tend to not have blood flow in them that's why they are usually white 
And so we want to bring blood flow to the scar, around the scar, so our body can heal it up. Our body always wants to heal. That's one of the amazing things about our body is it's constantly in the state of repair. So if you were to sit on the potty, probably, maybe with a squatty potty if you have one of those, or anything to lift your feet up, um, then what you can do, again, this is the vaginal canal. This is the anus. It's a pretty wide anus in this picture. But you can hook the thumb in the vaginal canal, and then the pointer finger comes and finds the scar. You just kind of roll the scar gently between your fingers. Again, this is once the scar is healed because we don't want to reopen. If there's, if there's pain when you're doing this, if you feel like it's gonna reopen, um, if there's any bleeding, stop. So once it's well formed, come on in here, roll it between your fingers to bring a lot of blood flow there. We want scars to be mobile and the tissue around it to be mobile so that you don't have any odd pulling when you move, so there's not restriction, so there's not pain during intercourse. And yeah, so the massage part's really pretty easy, as long as you're okay with touching your own body, which I hope you are. And just that nice gentle rolling. You could even have your partner do it. And it's up to you whether you want castor oil in your vaginal canal or not. Definitely appropriate exteriorly. If you want it internal, that's up to you. Um, for myself, I tend to not want any oddities. Um, and our vaginal walls are very absorbent. So whatever you put in there, we're definitely absorbing into our body. One other thing for helping heal is breathing. So when we breathe ideally, our rib cage, all of it expands. It's kind of like an umbrella opening. So even our back ribs will move. When we do this, we're allowing organs in our body to move, which creates uh, space for blood flow, creates movement, and then there's less likelihood of an adhesion of stickiness, of things just sitting on each other and getting stuck to each other. So that breathing helps everything keep moving. When we have an injury in our abdomen and our pelvic floor, we tend to start just breathing in our upper chest because we're afraid of breathing deep because it might cause pain. And in the beginning it might. And so maybe when your body holds off on that, that's fine, but then eventually start doing it so that there are less likelihood of adhesions. And breathing in general just is good for us. <laughs> um, circumference breathing allows for bowel movements to be more regular because again, we're massaging our organs. Um, constipation is pretty huge in our culture from what we eat, the lack of fluids, the, a lot of coffee and um, not breathing with our rib cage moving. And maybe you're gonna start trying to do that circumference breathing, but your ribs aren't moving. Yes, that is because we are so tight. So every time you walk through a door, you could just have your hand on the door frame, each time at a different height, a different angle. You can do both at the same time, one at a time, but that will start opening up our chest and our ribs, that, and just breathe in different positions. So say you're into yoga, whatever movement you're into, when you're in a different position, then try to breathe and move your ribs. So our, our rib cage, just like every other part of our body, if we only use it in a certain way, that's eventually the only way we're gonna be able to move it. Just like if I only ever move my arm here, Eventually, that's the only place I'm going to be able to move it. Everything else will be too tight. So the more we work with our rib cage in different configurations, the better, the better. So climbing a tree, breathe, playing with your kids down on the floor, 
breathe just in all kinds of different positions, um, arms in different ways, and that'll be great for everything. <laughs> You'd be surprised how different it is once you start to get more oxygen around in your body, especially when you're used to shallow breathing and you don't even know it. There's like more energy, there's better brain functioning, all kinds of good stuff. So anyway, these are a few ideas of how to help heal tearing out of our pelvic floor. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks. Bye.